Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us today as we will hear from Chief of Police Bobby Cummings announce his com comprehensive public safety strategy. Before we move forward with our press conference, we will receive a few remarks, brief remarks from our Mayor, Dennis P. Williams. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today to roll out our police plan. I have all the confidence in the world in Robert Cummings as our police chief. That's why I chose him. Today he will go into deep detail and tell you we're removing this police department into the 21st century. It's not going to be cheap, but I'll let Chief Cummings talk to you about that. And I'm quite sure we'll have all the support we need once we roll this out and everybody explains what we're trying to do as far as making this a better place, a better police department. As again, it's not going to come cheap, but I'm quite sure that all the supporters that stated they were with us from the beginning are still with us. And thank you very much. Chief Cummings? Sorry, Alex. Today you will hear from Wilmington Chief of Police Bobby L. Cummings, joined by Mayor Dennis P. Williams, to announce a comprehensive strategic public safety plan that proposes the reorganization of the Wilmington Police Department to concentrate on four branches of policing. It also creates four new positions, an inspector of strategic planning and development, an inspector of support services, chief information officer, and a director of communications. The plan also adds 12 officers to the Homicide and Violent Crimes Unit, dedicates 25 officers to community policing efforts throughout the three-sector deployment, and implements 83% of the recommendations from the Wilmington Public Safety Strategies Commission report. We will now hear from Chief of Police Bobby Cummings. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Like many cities around the United States, we've experienced violence. However, we've had many wins over the last couple of years. We've reestablished partnership with the Federal Task Force. We have officers now assigned to the FBI, DEA, ATF, U.S. Marshals, and also the State Gun Unit. We've experienced great turnaround with our downtown deployment in the city of Wilmington, creating better partnerships with the business owners and the residents who live in downtown and the riverfront, and the riverfront area. We become a Haida designated city, which is a high intensity drug trafficking area. We're also part of the region from Philadelphia and Camden Haida. So that brings again federal resources to our area to deal with those individuals that are involved in selling drugs. We're part of the VRN, which is the Violent Reduction Network. That brings resources to us from the DOJ. It provides experts from around the country in terms of training, technology, evaluation of our police department in terms of staffing and investigations. We brought a targeted analytical policing system, which we call TAPS. We direct our police department based on analytical data that is obtained through those meetings where we deploy our officers and provide better, better supervision over the activities that are occurring on the street. It's brought better technology to us. We have a shot spotter system. We're using match point, which we obtained from the ATF. We've also worked on strategies that are neighborhood focused which involves collaboration between the police and the community. However, we have a long way to go if we're going to reach our goals. It's not organized criminals driving up our crime rate in the city of Wilmington. The majority of our violence is committed by younger men struggling to find work and maintain their sense of respect and dignity. That's why in early October, we partnered with the VRN to begin developing strategies 
that are aimed at working with the community and not just policing them. My partner, Mr. Doug Ardella, actually Richard Ardella, who's been working with me with the VRN initiatives, he will come up to give you an update on where we stand with our initiatives. Good afternoon, everyone. As the chief mentioned, uh, we are part of the VRN. Uh, back in September of last year, we were designated as a VRN site. Um, the Violence Reduction Network is a uh, program that focuses on building coalitions and providing assistance to various police departments throughout the country. The police departments that have been selected for the first go around are Oakland, California, Chicago, Camden, Detroit, and naturally ourselves. The cities that were selected are really based on the uh, violent crime per capita. And also, they were look, looking at police departments that knew had, that they had a, uh, a willingness uh, to embrace the VRN philosophy and that the program would be successful. And based on the work that we've done already with the VRN starting in September, Wilmington has already been designated as one of the models, the national model, in fact, for the program moving forward. The Chief of Police will be involved in the, the next process of selecting the next, the next five cities a year from now. When we first received the uh, designation for the VRN, we were asked to identify several areas of uh, assistance, areas that we needed uh, special training and technical assistance in. And back in that time, the Chief and I identified uh, federal grant strategies as an initiative that we need to develop, uh, improved crime analysis. Uh, we had an individual, uh, Jerry Radcliffe from Temple University, who was here in January and started that process. Um, advanced technologies, we brought experts in uh, throughout the country from the VRN to take a look at our current technologies. Uh, included in that assessment was the downtown divisions, or the, down, you know, the downtown visions. And we also targeted uh, a complete assessment of the Criminal Investigative Division, which was done in February of this year. Um, the final piece of training that we're looking to bring is the uh, Enhanced Police uh, Relations and Community Policing uh, concept. You know, you've heard a lot of discussion about the uh, Blue Courage training. Well, in September, we had marketed that uh, training to come here uh, starting in July and the uh, staff of the Wilmington Police Department, the executive staff will start that training with the hopes of driving that mission down to the rank and file and the rank and file will get that training in September, October. Uh, the, the Blue Courage uh, president is designing a package specifically for Wilmington that will deal with uh, police relations, uh, morale within the police department, and uh, dealing with, uh, you know, building relationships within the community. You'll also see that in the, the uh, crime uh, report, and when you take a look at, at what we have done through the VRN, you'll see that there was a lot of initiatives that we had already identified through the VRN and had already implemented. And you'll see that that will coincide with what the uh, Crime Commission's report is. So in essence, that crime report validated the work that we had been doing. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Regarding the Wilmington Public Safety Strategies Commission, I'd like to thank them personally, all the members who participated in that, and also the consultants who took their time to evaluate our crime strategies um, as it relates to the city of Wilmington. Also, real quick, I'd like to thank my executive <coughs> staff who's worked real hard up until this point to get us here. And they will continue to work in that fashion. But I just wanted to recognize them for all the hard work that they've been doing. <laughs> the Wilmington Police Department is implementing 83% of the Wilmington Safety Strategies Commission's report. <coughs> Thanks to our partnership with the VRN, 58% or 62 recommendations are implemented already. 52 of the recommendations were implemented prior to the release of this commission report. 
11 of the recommendations were implemented since the release of this commission report. An additional 25% or 27 recommendations will be implemented before the end of this year. Three of these recommendations require slight modification. Four recommendations were not applicable and four recommendations were deemed not feasible. The Wilmington Police Department proposes a reorganization to concentrate on four specific branches of policing. Our strategic and planning development branch, our support services branch, operations branch, and an investigations branch. All together forms building stronger neighborhoods. The Wilmington Department of Police is proposing the hiring of two executive staff officers and two civilian personnel to support the new four branch organization. The Inspector of Strategic Planning and Development, the Inspector of Support Service, civilian personnel, a Chief Informations Officer, and a Director of Communications. Currently, the Wilmington Police Department does not have a chief crime strat uh, strategist. The newly created Strategic Planning and Development Branch would consist of the Crime Strategy Unit, the newly created Office of Technology, and two divisions. Under the Crime Strategy Unit, they would be responsible for all crime analysts, as well as developing and evaluating crime strategies providing data and analysis for the weekly TAPS meetings, and maintaining all intelligence data. The VRN identified last year that there were numerous opportunities that the Wilmington Police Department could take advantage of in terms of technology. One system that was brought to us was the match point system, which allows us to analyze ca shell casings from shooting incidents, and where that comparison would have taken us two to three months to get results on before. We can now do that within hours. Under the support services branch, the functions that fall within the support services branch are moved away from the operations branch and the investigative branch, which allow those two branches to focus specifically on investigations and or the community policing function that we need to put out on the street. Under the operations branch, our operations branch consists of the three sector deployment, which are commanded by captains. Those captains are in charge of all resources that fall within their area of responsibility. They're guiding their personnel through the TAPS information that we get through our analytical meetings. It allows them to supervise their personnel a little bit more efficiently and target the areas where the data leads us. Those sectors are also supplemented by a community policing unit, which will have 25 officers that are dedicated to that effort. Six officers will be assigned to sector one, six in sector three, and 13 in sector two, which includes the downtown area. The community policing unit effort is to strengthen relationships between the policing community. When we talk about community policing, it's not just the units that you'll see there, but it's a philosophy throughout the police, entire police department, which is being focused on by the Blue Courage training. Also, a component of disrupt will continue within our operational plan. The task that they were targeted to do will be carried out by this disrupt component, which they will continue to work on strengthening the relationships in the neighborhood. And they will be focused, they will be, their focus will be guided, again, by the captain of that sector. In our operations branch, that is where the majority of our personnel are assigned. That is the face of our police department, our first responders. They are the focus to make sure that we maintain a connection on the streets, and again, that's where this Blue Courage training comes into play. The focus of our investigations on the investigative branch 
What we're doing there on their investigative branch, they will consist of two divisions, the Criminal Investigations Division and the Drug Organized Crime Advice Division, well, they will, where they will specifically focus on investigations that occur of a violent nature and the coordination between those two branches will improve our outcome and our investigations because that is their sole focus. We're also increasing the homicide slash violent crimes unit. There are going to be 18 detectives assigned to that area, supplemented by a lieutenant and a sergeant. Again, their focus is along with the cold case unit to look at incidents that have occurred in the city and get the best outcome that we can. Right now, I will have Mr. Dave Soffrin come up to talk about the comparative implementation costs of these plans. Thank, Thank you, Dave. Good afternoon. Under the recommended changes proposed by the Commission, there includes an estimated 730000 in new costs for personnel for three additional sworn officers, approximately 981000 in new personnel costs for 11 additional civilian employees, approximately 955000 for additional compensation, <coughs> and an estimated $1.68 in new non-personnel funding, including the cost of establishing a real-time crime unit or center, excuse me, a communications consultant, and additional security camera monitors. The overall estimated cost to implement the recommendations of the Commission is approximately $4.35 million. The changes that the Chief has proposed for the Wilmington Police Department, which will implement 83% of the Commission's recommendations, will cost approximately $827,000 in personnel costs for the four proposed additional positions. Chief. Thank you, Dave. So in closing, I would like to say that policing is, the most, policing is most effective when officers are working with the community, not strictly policing it. Thank you for your attendance today. We will now hear from Chief of Staff Cleon Cauley, who will give a summation of the Comprehensive Public Safety Plan. So the Chief uh, went over a lot of detail this afternoon. Uh, what we'll be providing for you uh, as you leave today is a copy of the PowerPoint. We also have a document that broke down each and every division and all of the uh, initiatives that we went over today, and, and qu quite frankly, a lot more under each of those divisions. Uh, what you'll receive, uh, and will go up on the web very shortly, uh, and, and most will receive an email a little bit later, is a, an Excel sheet which goes through every single recommendation that was in the, uh, the, the Commission's report. It identifies those recommendations, it, d it identifies our response, and it also identifies our impl impl implementation excuse me, timeline. So all of that will be provided for you today. Uh, as you can see, uh, we've, we've spent, or the Chief and in his, uh, his group has spent a lot of time looking at the recommendations, working with the VRN, uh, working with the partners in the community, listening, uh, and deciding where we are going to go next. What you have before you is a plan that accomplishes the goals that we've heard. So we appreciate you. Uh, we look forward to the dialogue with Council to make sure that we can implement these changes uh, expeditiously uh, and we can move forward. Thank you all for your time. We'll now open it to the floor for questions from the media. We're excited from the start, um, as we stated earlier. <clears throat> we participated in this entire process. Our doors were always open uh, for the consultants to come in and take a look and evaluate our police department. 
And as these recommendations were being developed, we were right there um, at the table. Did, did you feel forced into any of it by the commission? No, we did not. What do you think is going to be the hardest thing to, you know, what's the one thing that's going to be the hardest to implement of all of this? Because, I mean, obviously there's money, there's logistics, there's old habits, and things like that. I mean, I'm sure it's all tough. But what's the thing that you look at and go, that's going to be the biggest mountain for us? The biggest uh, hurdle for us to uh, um, overcome, I believe, would be the funding issue. The uh, logistics were, were there. Um, that's not an issue. Um, rolling it out in terms of policy, things of that nature, again, that's uh, just something that we do, but that's not an issue. Chief, how long do you think it will take to implement all of this and have a, a finished product? For the recommendations that we said we're going to implement and those that we're still studying, we're giving ourselves a timeline uh, to look at those things uh, before the end of the year. Yes, there were over 83% of them that were already uh, implemented. If, if we could, could you go back to the, 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 the one slide with the bar charts? So on that slide, you'll see that uh, a good deal, 48%, was implemented prior to March 31st. So, and that was a lot of that was the partnership with the Violence Reduction Network. Uh, and you'll also see that there were 11 that was implemented literally directly after 11 other uh, recommendations and about 10 percent. Again, that was because we were already in the dialogue, already had the communications and moving forward. Uh, the 27 uh, that will be implemented before the end of the year, they might have been things that we were, we were already working on, but we're going to need a little bit more time to implement as well. There's about 11 out of research that we're still researching, and then you had the four that were not applicable and, and not feasible. So, well, then I guess um, you, the plan calls for hiring new people. Has that already been done? And has the restructuring been done? The proposal for hiring obviously has to be approved for funding. The restructuring is occurring. Sure. Well, let's first go to not applicable. One was a request of, of state government. Like, like we said, there will be a document where you can go and address it. But one was a request of, of state government, and then I believe three others were a direct request of cease violence. Uh, and cease violence is just not a, uh, it's not a WPD. Uh, WPD doesn't run cease violence. So it's, it's not something that the police department could could implement. That's correct. With regards to the four that, that were not feasible, uh, one was with regards to the the light duty officer, if you could speak to that. Yes. Um, we were being requested to provide a light duty personnel in our downtown visions. Um, our policy does not allow for personnel to go outside of the building during their work hours. They're not able to drive. That becomes a liability issue, so that's not feasible for us. Another was the camera locations. One of the things that um, was requested was a report that outlined where all of the cameras in the city are that are either not working or functional. So if you get the ones that are not working, again, for a criminal, that gives you an idea of where you can operate and or if you know where all the functional cameras are, then you're also going to know where to operate. The one was sergeants. Detectives. Oh, detectives, excuse me. Oh, the other um, was a career belt development path. And what we decided was that our agency is, is not that large. We're 320 sworn personnel. If we go on a designated um, career path, that limits the mobility for other officers and an opportunity to move around. What our focus is, is that our officers are more well-rounded. So it gives everyone an opportunity to move around. Our police department does not exist of 13,000 or 6,000 or 8,000 police officers, we're at 320. And our math's not off. Just sit standing here, I don't remember the fourth, but it might have had something to do with regards to the cost of, this, of the civilians. Oh. In the report, uh, it had an additional nine civilians. I believe that either fell under uh, not feasible or something that we're going to still look at to implement. But again, there will be a more detailed document that will lay that out as well. Uh, can this be implemented at the current staffing levels? 
how will that change as the department adds more police recruits as they graduate? Yes, currently we are at authorized strength, and we, with my executive staff, we went through some realignment uh, to deploy our personnel um, in a more effective manner. The only thing that could not happen until we get approval is the addition of the inspector's position to then realign for more focused investigations, more focused uh, operations. Um, so that um, could not be implemented right away as we only have two inspectors currently. And I, I will add, when you look at it, under the strategic and, and development branch, uh, there were several different uh, recommendations that fell under that. So without that focus, uh, to focus on the areas of support service, strategic development, investigations, you lose some of those, those other uh, recommendations. 